Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, session, uh, this discussion uh, on the 10 C model of supply selection. This is a discussion between myself, Dr. Wayne Carter, and Jeff Consul, uh, one of our senior consultants. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Uh, good, afternoon, good afternoon, Ray. How are you? Um, thank good you good. for inviting me to, uh, to this discussion. Uh, well, thank you for being at home and to, to join us. Okay. I always like to map the territory, as it were, when we're having these sorts of discussions. Uh, and in terms of supplier selection, um, we are talking about a systematic approach, you know, step by step. Uh, we're looking at analysing and verifying the resources they have to do the work required or deliver the service and their capabilities of these, of these potential suppliers and contractors to an extent of risk and value. Uh, what I mean by that is if it's high risk, high value, then one would adopt a fairly robust approach, a deep delve into uh, their resources. Whereas if it's a routine activity, one might be much more light to touch because of the in less risk and less value in relation to that type of contract. But the overall point is to, to be able to appoint an effective and sustainable source. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd, I'd definitely agree with you there, Ray. I think that um, this is so important, isn't it, in today's environment, you know, the sustainable outcome of uh, relationships and making sure that businesses have got those resources and capable skills, you know, uh, with the risk that's businesses are facing today well particularly with supply chain issues we've had in recent years after covid but those companies that did have good secure supply chains with good reliable suppliers have done better than those who who, who didn't have those, those kind of uh, systems in place yeah yeah agreed and these type of companies uh, are examples where they have very good supply chains they have very good professional procurement people and most of the people that work in procurement and these sorts of blue chip companies have all become SIPs qualified. Uh, I guess some of them with, with you, uh, Jeff. Down in, uh, yeah, I guess down the, in yeah, looking at the list there, there's, there's several uh, organisations that uh, we've been training directly. Uh, and of course, they having done their SIPs qualifications, the 10 Cs are very much part of that process. So yeah, it yeah. all links in neatly. Yeah. And also that the guys on our side are doing the world cc practitioner course again they have yeah. they're exposed to the model and no doubt they are using it uh, day to day uh, yeah. when they go back to their parent uh, organizations yeah yeah and i think i think the model you know has got lots of um abilities not only in the selection process but it also can serve as a long time uh, check as well to make sure that the organizations are keeping to the value that they um that, that we set, you know, that we assess them on right at the start, if you like. Well, it's interesting you say that because SIPs also reckon, re relate this model as a supplier evaluation tool as well as a supplier selection tool. Yeah, yeah, and that's good, that's good. Okay, so what are the 10 Cs? Uh, well, I mean, they're fairly self-evident. I mean, it's not rocket science, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a play on words. And the origin to this is when I was teaching at university, and doing research into this sorts of topic, that uh, it was kind of an aid de, aid de memoir for students doing their degree program uh, to help them answer questions on supplier selection. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, it's now become extremely popular. Lots of people use it, uh, and you know, it's pretty much a, a one of one of the recognised models of supplier selection. Uh, yeah. Obviously, competency, capacity, uh, fairly self evident. We want suppliers who are consistent in their delivery, suppliers who can control their pro internal processes. Uh, I mean, obviously, if a company can't control its own processes, how is it going to help us to control ours? Exactly, and that you know places a big uh, a big uh, uh, challenge, doesn't it, on that uh, on getting it right? Um, weren't these seven C's at one time, Ray? They were seven uh, actually uh, back in back in the day. Uh, and over time, uh, it's interesting actually because it pre when it's seven C's there was no CSR. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, since since then CSR has become much more prevalent, much more important topic. 
So fortunately, it became a C. So it was quite fortunate that that fitted in. Uh, but it's also a reflection how things have changed. I mean, again, in the original model, there was no culture and relationships. Yeah. Because, you know, back in the day, we bought things uh, and people turned up and we paid them and that was it. I mean, it's only in recent, relative recent time that yeah. people have realised just how important relationships are, which is why yeah. it's in there. Uh, yeah. And also communications. It was brought yeah. to my attention that, you know, one of the big important points about yeah. selecting the right supply is someone you can communicate with. So that's why it's evolved into, into 10. Yeah. That's interesting. And picking up on the CSR point there, you know, the um, some of the um, uh, public sector um, uh, regulations will change, are changing. And in fact, social value within yeah. that yeah. CSR is becoming yeah. ever increasingly big topic, you know. And a big percentage of the award criteria. It is. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Again, it's part of that, the Brexit dividend uh, yeah. that people talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, although there are 10 Cs, uh, some Cs are more important than others. Yeah. Uh, and this, this is a, re a, a reflection on the nature of the work. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I was just thinking that because, you know, like, for example, if you're in the construction sector or you're in the service sector, I suspect there could well be different sort of uh, weighting factors that we might use. So if, if we're looking at it from a, a sort of construction uh, perspective, what might be the sort of Cs that you think would be best appropriate, would you say? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean like, it's a classic example would be uh, construction. If yeah. you're in the construction sector, then out of my 10 Cs, one, yeah. one would be critical success of the project, yeah. which is often the mirror image of what would go wrong if they don't have it. So basically, they need to have a pretty good balance sheet because of the nature of the work. It's funded by the contractor. They have to wait maybe months before they get their stage payments. So having a good balance sheet and access to funds would be critical for construction. Uh, CSR would be very important given the risk we're running with slave labour and indentured labour. Yeah. Control of process, I guess, because in construction, there's lots of things going on. They've got yeah. to buy the materials, they've got to move them, they've got to be safe. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of subcontractors. So, you know, I would say those three would be very important. Would be very important, yeah. yeah. And I, I guess at the as well is is obviously the 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 competency value of the con, the contractor is going to be very important in this because you're obviously handing over so much activity on their shoulders to do on behalf of uh, of your operation, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Whereas if it was, um, uh, say, a service contract, like mm -hmm. consultancy, for example, then culture and relationships would be very important because yeah. you're dealing with these people day to day or sharing information with them. You would not be so concerned about their balance sheet because they get paid once a month sure. for the invoice. So it's, it's, it is a matter of re reflecting the nature of the work. Yeah and the risks in the contract and involves and i guess one of the big uh, challenges with with all of this really is is the verification of that information from from su suppliers yeah. i guess to some degree it's about what questions you can ask and how can you successfully understand the value of the information they're providing you you know how how, how deep do you go yeah well be. again i think that goes back to uh, the crowd jack risk and reward matrix if it's a strategic contract then you would spend a considerable amount of time yeah. deep delving into their inner workings yeah um because we've had situations where we've done this on behalf of clients we've taken out an audit for a client and yeah. we found the suppliers have said things that they haven't said they've resources they don't have yeah uh, projects they've never been involved i mean we had one organization and we've been involved in a large project and when we delved into it, you know, they were sort of involved in the catering yeah. uh, for, <laughs> for the office staff, which is not quite the same as building a new, a new highway. Yeah. Um, so one has to be a little bit careful. Uh, I mean, most suppliers are reasonably honest. I wouldn't say they're dishonest, but no. sometimes we have to delve a little bit deeper just to yeah. make sure that we're, you know, I mean, another good example would be, you know, recently when that company tried to get the, the ferry contract. Yeah. Remember they were using Pizza Express terms and conditions. And Absolutely. They had no ships, no phone. No. And it's an extreme case, but, you know, it yeah. does happen. It does happen. It does. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's that due diligence, really, I think, is uh, is essential just to 
ensure we're getting it right from from day one you know they big decisions aren't there that need to be made well it's it's like you know um act in haste and repent at leisure because once you sign one of these contractors up and you yeah. realize it's a suboptimal decision extremely difficult to get out of it yeah. you know uh and <laughs> once you've signed on the dotted line yeah. then on the big on the big project to suddenly yeah. go oh my you know this is not the right these people aren't what we expected it's a bit late then because yeah. you know, yeah. got contractual commitments and they've started work and yeah so i, I we, we strongly advise clients to be very very careful about making those sorts of decisions yeah absolutely yeah and then that, that leads us on nicely to validity uh, yeah. a part of the model is asking measuring i guess how valid the evidence is now if the evidence submitted or gathered by the supplier uh, is complete you know, there's nothing forthcoming or missing, and it's been verified by by a third party, someone other than the supplier saying this is true, and it's up to date and it's comprehensive, yeah. and it's observed, and we've been there and we've talked to them. Then we will score that fairly highly, yeah, uh, in the equation. Second tier, where it's it's almost complete, but there's some more to follow, and it's verified, and you know, it's lesser uh, yeah. lesser quality, as it were. Uh, some use of past records that would be a, a, a median score, but we we're very reluctant to rely totally on past records, yeah. total submissions, paper, you know, yeah. online systems that some people use, which where there's no verification, you're taking everything at face value. You are, it's not saying you wouldn't select them, but you are increasing the risk that yeah. you know maybe some of this is not totally accurate or something missing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's interesting nowadays that uh, often a question uh, which is asked uh, is, do you have any outstanding disputes? Yeah. Uh, which wasn't a question. I've been in the, like you and I, we've been in the business <laughs> for a long time. And I, you know, in the, in the midst of time, they never, we, ne we were never asked questions about, are you, do you have any disputes with your suppliers? It just wasn't asked. But obviously, all these things are constantly developing. So people are... Because uh, I think once you ask the question, then the supply is, is uh, obliged to give you an answer. Yeah. If you don't ask, then, you know, you don't get. No, so. exactly. And you've got you've got to delve into yeah. sort of getting sensible, responsible answers yeah. back. Yeah. One of the things that might be useful is, um, you know, thinking about quite often we go to the main contractor, don't we? We go to the main service provider to give us the, the evidence and we can evaluate that evidence. But if they've got, you know, a fair amount of subcontractors, is is there a way, do you think, that these can be measured or is it this going to be based really on the yeah. time that is available? Uh, well, I think that what we would advise is that you flow this down uh, to the contractors. So you'd yeah. say to the main contractor you've selected, we want evidence that you have applied the same due diligence and discipline and model yeah. to your subcontractors. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if we don't do that, you're wasting your time because yeah. the, the prime contractor may may have all these things, but then he he, uh, he outsources forty percent of the work to people who've got none of these attributes. Yeah. So yeah. we would make it contingent on on the award the award criteria that all all these factors are flowed down uh, to their subcontractors and evidence thereof. Yeah, no, it sounds uh, sounds like a very uh, sensible approach all around, actually, doesn't it? To make sure that. You know, we are delving into that supply chain, and especially today, I suspect, because um, you know, the, you know, with with a lot of supply chains, there's quite a number of um, subcontractors involved in that process. And whilst it might be difficult to manage every single one all the time, uh, it's important to get that uh, evidence of uh, of, of uh, information. Yeah. Well, I think I mean with all suppliers, if you ask them to do something, they will do it. Yeah. If you don't ask them to do it, then they won't necessarily do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's human nature, you know. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. If you've got four clients and one is asking to do all these things yeah. and the other three aren't, then you'll focus on the one that is, and the other three can take their, yeah. <laughs> take their chance, as it yeah. were. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, and if anybody out there would like more information about the Tainson model or how it can improve your supplier and contractors are selected, then you know, please feel free to email the office and someone will get back to you. And thank you for listening, and thank you, Jeff, for participating. Yeah.